She took good care of Chuck. You had to uh, go through a rite of passage with Poncho. <laughs> Want to tell us about that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> her place, her main revenue was Hollywood people flying over the mountain, landing on her. She had a runway. She had a B-25. Oh. She had a B-25. The Bombay was sealed. That was her bedroom. Oh, is that uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> when she traveled, she went with a B-25. But anyway, <clears throat> all of those people, Hollywood rich types, that land and prearrange that they were coming anyway, and then spend a couple of nights there maybe. In our case, the people at Edwards, it was now Edwards, the speed of sound had been broken. Mm -hmm. um, when they came, they had to be escorted by some other member uh, before them. So um, I was escorted by, uh, oh God, he was mayor of Lancaster then, test pilot. The whole deal was you, you'd uh, step up and he'd knock on the door and she'd bellow out, come on, and he would leave, leave you standing there. And she'd open the door and she'd be standing there in a pair of panties and a sweatshirt and her hair all over the place. If you moved half an inch back like that, get out of here, scum. Get out of here. You know, if instead of that, when the door opened, you smiled and stuck out your hand, hi, I'm Bob. Come on in, you son of a bitch. Let's have a drink. <laughs> You were accepted. <laughs> yeah, you were accepted. From then on, she was a good-hearted old gal. I mean, she'd out, she could outcuss every mule skinner out in that desert. And she was quite a pilot herself. Very fact, accomplished. There was, yeah, it was uh, Howard. She was originally an 18-year-old Santa Barbara debutante, mm. fam rich family. And, but she was kind of wild. She wasn't very good looking, mm -hmm. and she was kind of wild. She was a tomboy. Um, so they married her off to this Presbyterian minister. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> now, as soon as she came into her money, she was off and, off and running. Howard Hughes uh, told her, he found her, that uh, Pancho, I'm gonna build you an airplane. I want you to beat. Jacqueline Cochran in the Bendix and the Thompson. And he did, and she did. Wow. If you go to Adventureland, as you're walking down the ramp, you'll see my picture, but you'll also see Pancho leaning against her black mystery ship. Okay. That she beat Jacqueline Cochran. So she, she, I mean, she could talk aviation to you. She could <laughs> talk anything you wanted to talk about. <laughs> what was the booby uh, prize? Huh? What was the booby prize? <laughs> um, yeah, she had a rug made that was just all breasts. <laughs> the booby prize is you had to walk across that rug <laughs> with a drink in your hand to see if you could make it all the way across. <laughs> um, uh, Anyway, uh, she was quite a gal, no question about it. Now, it was, um, especially the officers' wives, because they heard a lot of tales of what went on. And mm -hmm. It was, no, it was not a brothel. Pancho had uh, a lot of things in her youth that, uh, so she was well connected in Hollywood, very well. So in Hollywood, she would find a young lady that came from Sweden or some other part of the world to make it big in the movies. And after many casting couches and whatnot, didn't quite make it, she'd pick them up. She'd say, okay, honey, look, I got a ranch up there and I've got a bunch of test pilots that live right on the edge and they come to my ranch. It's called the Happy Bottom Riding Club. I want you to come up for two years. 
uh, dance with them, play the piano, uh, just generally be a good hostess. No sex. If you want to have sex with one of them, you get off my place and go somewhere, but not in my place. And she used to tell us, if I catch you in the women's place in there, you're banned. But net result, we had uh, about 15 young ladies, all of them gorgeous, um, and none of them had names. Oh. The one I used to dance with was February Jones. <laughs> and there was January, February, March, April. <laughs> <laughs> uh, complete anonymity. Um, then we had the, uh, the head gal, she was from Sweden. Incidentally, at the last reunion up there, we got her back from Sweden. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's still alive. I don't know where all the rest are. But the thing is, at the end of the two years, if they behaved themselves, she would take them down to Hollywood, rodeo away, buy them a complete outfit of summer, winter clothes, mint coat, all that luggage, and she would take them into one of the studios and they'd do a, a five, ten minute clip of her in a movie, mm -hmm. faking it from another movie. Got it. Yeah. And she'd give them the reel of celluloid and a check for $25,000 and an airline ticket back to their wherever they came from. That was how she treated her gals. She was very protective of them. Um, it was not what people thought. Now, the reason for the Happy Bottom Riding Club, she kept, after all of this time, she now had money and money. She wanted a divorce from the minister, and he would not give her a divorce. Uh, the SOB won her money. <laughs> so one day, she got a white stallion, got completely nude, and drove that stallion up the aisle of his church. Oh, no. <laughs> He gave her a divorce. <laughs> so when you go there, you, well, I guess it's gone now, but when you'd go there, you'd see this great big horse with a nude riding the, and that's why she called it the Happy Bottom Riding Club. Oh. Everybody else had more lurid ideas what it was. It was her. No, it was her on her white stallion. How about uh, that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we all loved her. You know, she just, uh, uh, She'd loan out money if you really needed it, you know. Like, uh, it's just, uh, anyway, that's a point in history that yeah. uh, some people think the wrong way.